the last thing you said was very tantalizing. You said you'd have to come back into active politics. That's what you plan, is it? Well, it's not what I plan. It's not what I want. Um, I was, you know, thrilled uh, to lead UKIP, to pressure Cameron into offering a referendum, into working in that referendum campaign, into winning. Um, we've triggered Article 50. I thought it was all done. Uh, Mrs May went for the big majority. Uh, she was found out, I think, in this campaign. And what's remarkable about Corbyn's achievement is he's getting Remainers in London voting for him, but he's getting UKIP voters around the rest of the country voting for him too. Now, of course, he's not going to be able to form a government on his own if it, if it works out that way, but if we get a coalition uh, with him and the SNP and whoever else, uh, then we may well be looking down the barrel of a second referendum. Is the whole Brexit uh, campaign, the Brexit decision, is it all in jeopardy now? Is the timetable, uh, does it mean anything anymore? Well, it's, it, it, I mean, let's see, there's a long way to go, uh, but I do think this. I think, let's say the other result happens. Let's say May scrapes through with a small majority or forms a minority government, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure that her credibility is going to be very strong in Brussels. So I think, uh, yes, the timetable, whatever happens here, is likely to get pushed back. But uh, how confident are you that there'll still be what's called the hard Brexit that you wanted and that you think you won a year ago? Well, I was always a bit suspicious with, with Mrs May as to whether we'd get it. I mean, she was asked in the campaign repeatedly Having back Remain, did she now believe in Brexit? And not once did she say yes. She just said she was carrying out the will of the people. Uh, you know, this may prove to be unfinished business. Vicar of Bray, you think she is? Uh, I do, yes. Uh, Vicar's very much daughter, so. Vicar of Bray. <laughs> very much so, yes. And in the end, I think, when Corbyn said that they would end free movement, when Corbyn said that under Labour we would leave, I think he kind of boxed off mm -hmm. Brexit as an issue for UKIP voters, many of whom did not see the party as being relevant in this campaign. And ultimately, I think the shock we're seeing here tonight is all about personality. And, you know, UKIP voters want somebody they think is speaking for them. They want somebody who is for change. And what Theresa May tried to do was to be the establishment figure. Corbyn, I thought, through the campaign, looked comfortable in his own skin, he actually appeared to be enjoying it, uh, and the Prime Minister came across as insincere and, frankly, robotic. Andrew, Andrew Maher has a question for you. Could I mm. ask you, Nigel Farage, whether you think or, um, those very pro-Brexit, strong Brexit MPs in the Tory party will now try to remove Theresa May as Prime Minister? Uh, yes, and I also think... Uh, actually, Andrew, I think on both sides of the debate within the Conservative Party, the Prime Minister's uh, credibility as leader of that party is fatally damaged. All right. Thank you very much, Mr Farage. Let's